The O Cannabis Conference and Expo returns to Toronto June 1st through the 3rd, and there's still some good booth locations available. This exciting event is free for cannabis retailers and will feature Tommy Chong receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award at the O Cannabis Industry Awards. For more information about exhibiting or to register to attend, go to ocannabis.com. That's O C A N N A B I Z.com. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to do a video that we haven't updated in quite a while, which is for pre-roll automations. So either cones or cylindrical joints or even blunts. We've seen um, quite a few different options over the last few years, which is a huge improvement from about five years ago when I did my first video uh, looking for investment to build uh, an automated solution, not the shake tables that you're seeing, seeing from future roller, but like real automated solutions. So when I made this video in 2015, it was with that intention on getting capital. So I went to the marijuana show, which is like shark tank for cannabis and pitched that, but everyone wanted uh, a prototype. So I went to Snoop Dogg's investment uh, company called Casa Verde Capital. They also wanted a prototype. And I told them straight up, if I had a prototype, I'd be printing money, quite literally. So I didn't get the capital for that. This uh, video here has about 40,000 views. So it's definitely still something that people are interested in. And now there's an actual solution. So you guys have probably all have heard of Futurola's knockbox. It's a little shake table. You put your cannabis in there after you've ground it up. It shakes it all in and then makes a pre-roll. Problem with this and a lot of other machines is that it doesn't get to the base and pack that as well as it should. And so when you don't have a very tight base, it leaves for like clogging effects. So the very last half inch of that pre-roll is not be, you can't really use it. You can rip it off and throw it into a bong or whatever. But um, a lot of the problems with this is it doesn't pack very well. You also have to weigh each one and twist the top. So it's really not an automated solution. Other competitors have come out and tried to make a, a pre-roll machine that does faster than future rollers, but it doesn't solve the problems. It doesn't accurately weigh them. It doesn't pack the base and it doesn't twist the tops automatically. So while it might produce more than future roller, a lot of these shake tables haven't solved the fundamental problem. So we're going to take a look at uh, nine or 10 different machines, uh, nine automated machines. Now we already took a look at future roller. That's not an automated solution. Some of these machines range anywhere from 85,000 to 300,000. There is no real cheap solution. If you want to automated solution, it's not cheap. Um, there is a tabletop for the Sesh technology machine that we just showed, the STM, that's a, you know, basically the same thing as Futurola. So they do have, you know, bigger, faster tabletop versions, but those aren't automated solutions. There is no small automated solution. These things are huge. Uh, the equivalent of a couple ATM machines, and they are not cheap. So this first one we're going to take a look at is Evans McTavish uh, pre-rolls. So they were a tobacco company. They tried to make cannabis and then reverted back to hemp because cannabis was too sticky. I met these guys at the MJ BizCon in Las Vegas in 2018. They have a huge grinder, $60,000 bud buster, as they call it. They have a lot of equipment that I don't think the cannabis industry is necessarily ready for, like conveyor belts. And so a lot of these tobacco companies want to sell you multi-million dollar equipment that the, the cannabis industry isn't ready for. They don't need conveyor belts yet. So this is a teeny little pre-roll machine that they have. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We've got a playlist for automation right here. You can see on the floor of MJ BizCon, the Bud Buster. I mentioned the $60,000 grinder. And then we'll skip forward to the pre-roll machine that you can see right here with the bobbin system. That's the wheel of paper. So it's got a really fine, or excuse me, really a narrow profile where there's a hopper that you put the cannabis into with the grinder in there. This machine is about $300,000 for the pre-roll machine, $60,000 for the grinder. They want to sell you all of it. A lot of these companies um, want to ensure quality. And that's ridiculous because um, they can't. <laughs> but they still want to sell you the machines to ensure that uh, the finished product is what they anticipate. Uh, and they don't even know cannabis. So it's a little frustrating trying to deal with these guys sometimes. So this is a cylindrical machine. It's not a cone. So that's the one interesting thing about this. I think it's perfect for hemp. They need to move a little bit farther along before they can have a full a cannabis option. I've got a diagram here for floor space requirements, all of that. Uh, and I work with Sam. So if you've got any questions, let me know. I'll get you in contact with the right people. 
So the statistics on that machine, about 225,000 for the cylindrical joint rolling machine, uh, 500 per minute. You don't have to worry about different cycle times. So like, for example, with the Futurola or the STM rocket box, you have to put the, the cannabis in there and then put all the cones in there. And that takes a lot of time. You might only get four cycles an hour. Uh, whereas with this machine, it's just nonstop continuous. So you get about 30,000 an hour compared to about 1800 on the rocket box or a thousand on the knock box. You are stuck to a single size. That's a one gram joint. They don't have the options for, for different sizes yet. And it doesn't have a check way. So we'll get into that where it has a built in weigh mechanism but it does have that open top. So you don't have to worry about twisting it for these. But moving on to Machina Can, I ran into these guys at Lyft up in Vancouver, BC. This machine is about 400,000. It is a cone shaped. It will do 33 a minute, nonstop continuous. Accuracy is 0.01 grams. So that's within Health Canada and US regulations. It does not have a built-in weigh mechanism, but you can have multiple sizes. Um, and although it doesn't twist the tops, it does fold them. So that's kind of a nice little option if you've seen that with pre-rolls where they fold it uh, a lot better, in, in my opinion, than that twist. So I ran into the manufacturer of this machine um, a few years ago, previous to seeing it on the floor up in Vancouver, BC. They've made some uh, adjustments to that. And so that's good. Um, it does weigh it. Um, so I believe that there is a weigh mechanism and it's not based on volume. So the, the new um, added features um, that I haven't updated yet does include a check weigh system and it does twist the tops. I don't know how well it packs the base though. So um, looking at some of them, it looked like they were okay. Um, but as time moves on, that's going to be something that's essential is to really get that base nice and packed tight. Because as you smoke something that's um, maybe too dry, and that's another thing that we'll, we'll talk on is um, the grind and the, uh, the humidity. If it's too dry, it's going to clog. And so there's some issues with that, and, and we'll touch on that at the end. I like how you can just stack the pre-rolls in there and they just uh, take them one by one. The cannabis is put into to a box and uh, the gravity just takes over and kind of just fills it up automatically. So one person can run a couple of these different machines. All right, moving on to Canna Automation. $350,000 machine. It is a cone. It'll do 30 uh, per minute. So about 2,400 an hour. Accuracy is 0.02%. Um, the check weight system, I'm not sure about. It does do multiple sizes and it will twist the tops automatically. Not only will it twist the tops, it'll fold them if you want them to. So this is one, one of the only machines I've seen that offers that uh, twisting and folding. It does weigh them as well. I don't have a video on this. I ran into these guys on the floor of the Lift Expo in Vancouver, BC uh, earlier this year. A lot of these machines are starting to look uh, very similar. I think they've taken a look at one another and just try to automatically kind of come up with the same solution. So this Prosa pack at $350,000 is also a cone making machine running at 20 a minute, uh, 1800 output per hour with an accuracy of 0.01 grams. It does have a check weigh system. It does allow for multiple sizes and it will twist the tops. So this machine is still about four by four by about six feet tall. Um, but one thing about this is eventually uh, this the control system will be allowed to uh, integrate with your state regulators. So um, in Washington, we have the, the Liquor and Cannabis Board. And so having something like this directly tied into your regulatory agency would be helpful because then they know that there's no diversion into the black market. You'll know exactly how many of these are being rolled. Not only that, if a, if a company is buying these and leasing them out uh, with royalties, that company will know exactly how many are manufactured as well. We've got a full dialogue here, uh, our diagram where it'll roll it as well as uh, package it. And so packaging companies or packaging machines are, are very, very expensive, more expensive than the rolling machines themselves. So the packaging machines start at 300,000 and go up from there. And there's no single type of packaging machine. So if you have 
uh, dube tubes or tins or bags, you know, mylar or whatever. There's a different machine for all of those. So you have to be really, really sure what kind of packaging you want. Otherwise, you're going to be dropping another a quarter to a half million dollars on a machine. So getting something like this that has the machine and uh, packaging together, as long as you know what you want, is a nice option. And more and more companies are offering packaging in addition to uh, their rolling machines. So the next one is from Paxium. They've been really quiet about this. I actually found out about it through the grapevine. They're being really kind of coy, just sending out emails to existing um, account holders. And they're not really talking a whole lot about it. But based on what I can see that they're going to have a $300,000 pre-roll machine in the shape of a cone that'll do 60 pre-rolls a minute. And I'm not sure about what the output is going to be or if it has a check way or what sizes. I don't have any information. I just know that Paxium is a big uh, manufacturer. They're going to come out with one of these eventually. So Apex is another one that I ran into at um, MJ BizCon and I think Lyft as well. $95,000 machine. So incredibly affordable. Uh, it does pre-rolls at 20 a minute. And so it's based on volume though, the accuracy, it doesn't have a check waste system. And I'm not sure if it twists the tops or folds them either. Moving right along to the Easy J Auto Roller for 85,000. It's also a cone. It'll do uh, eight a minute, eight pre-rolls a minute. Um, don't have much on the output or the accuracy. So we ran into these guys in Oregon at uh, a hemp expo. And so this guy was selling his little Easy J roller to the hemp industry. So talked to him about uh, the grinder right there at the top. It has a built-in grinder and a check waste system. The base was fairly uh, soft. And so you can kind of see the indentation there. And it's, it's not a really packed joint at all. So this one would be good, I think, for the hemp industry. But I wouldn't consider this machine ready to use. Uh, for cannabis in the commercial scale yet. All right, I heard Green Bros is going to be making a machine. I don't have a lot of information, but uh, they did have a banner up at MJ BizCon fourth quarter 2019. And so the price of this is going to be to, de de uh, to be determined. It's going to be a cone shaped, but I don't know what the, the cycle time is, how much they're able to do per minute or what the accuracy is. Don't have any information. So here's a video that I found online. It looks like they may have taken it down since. I'm not sure if this is a prototype. Maybe they've changed it. So you can kind of see that they're doing their own weighing system uh, for each in particular pre-roll. Uh, and so this machine is a little bit unique with regards to how it weighs it. But it's one of those situations where the base is going to be the, the biggest issue. I think trying to pack cones in general at the base is difficult. So we've looked at cylindrical joints. We've looked at pre-rolls. Let's take a look at blunts because blunts, especially in a place like California, are hugely popular. Although you can't have tobacco, you can have hemp wrapped or mint or natural unbleached white paper. Um, so this blunt rolling machine is about $300,000. It is cylindrical. It'll do 45 per minute or 2,700 an hour. The accuracy is 0.05 grams. It does not have a check weigh system. It will do multiple, whether you want a, a little cigarello or a fat old, um, you know, big old blunt. Um, does not twist the tops. It's open just like a cigar. So this blunt machine is converted from a, an old cigar rolling machine. So it doesn't have a check weigh system. It does uh, fill it based on volume. So you can have uh, hemp wraps uh, for this bobbin system. So it has a, a wheel of paper and it takes that paper and rolls it with it. Um, so you can do any kind of size you want. It is the, the size is based on volume. You can add a check weigh system so you can have accurate weighing. Um, and that would just be on the top there with the vertical fill. So these are um, highly popular in, in Nevada and California. Infused canarillos or, or cigars uh, are a huge popular item. One of the top questions I get is, do you really need a machine to do this? And the answer is yes, automation is necessary. So when you look at uh, the last time anybody in the United States paid a company to roll cigars, it was probably in the late 1800s. And yet we have people that uh, have companies, 18 people making pre-rolls in Washington state. So uh, it's incredibly unique at this point in time to not automate. I think pre-rolls are here to stay and you can see that based on their popularity. Looking at 2017 statistics on the number of joints sold, 3.5 million in Alaska, 10 million in Oregon, 11 million for Washington. Looking at Colorado, they sold 21 million 
pre-rolls in 2017, 34 million in Nevada and 42 million in California. Some of the Canagar prices that we see are about $420 with a wholesale price of 150, but the cost of goods sold is only $20. So it kind of makes sense with this machine. In terms of market capture and growth of uh, products in each state, Colorado saw a growth of 29%, $21 million in sales at a 5% market capture all the way down to California, 30% growth, 42 million in sales and 6% market capture. Washington had the highest market capture at 12%, totaling 68 million with 36% growth. Infused pre-rolls, however, are taking off quite a bit. And so Washington has 103% growth at only 5.8 million in sales. Now, granted, this is 2017 uh, for fourth quarter. And that market capture was 18% Washington. Um, we don't have any growth statistics for Cali, but the sales were almost 12 million at 28% market capture for infused pre-rolls fourth quarter 2017. Regardless of how you get your data, whether it's headset, BDS analytics, or otherwise, you can see pre-roll sales are one of the number one uh, products sold in terms of popularity. You know, concentrates are, are taking off, but flour is dominant. And in terms of a particular skew, pre-roll sell more than just about anything. If we go way, way back to 2016, pre-rolls experienced a huge growth at $158 million generated between Colorado, Washington, and Oregon. During the month of December 2016 alone, approximately 1.1 million joints were purchased, totaling 8.5 million in Washington. And the following month, joints consumption dropped to a mere 888,000 joints, generating almost 6.5 million in revenue. I love this map of Washington State. It shows each county how many joints were smoked during December of 2016. King County, where Seattle is at, had 3.2 million joints smoked, whereas Whatcom County, where I went to college up by the Canadian border, 380,000 joints were smoked. And so you can see just how popular and prevalent pre-rolls are. There's a lot of opportunities with mobile processing. You can see that you could charge a minimal fee to producers or processors for as little as 50 cents per unit rolled or buy the machines and lease them, having a franchise or royalty at five cents each per, per unit rolled. Here's some more fun facts for Washington State. We had 10 million pre-rolls in 2016, 81 million in revenue. Uh, that weighed about uh, 1.7 million grams and was 40 million inches long. <laughs> Some competitive advantages to think about. There's an opportunity for top shelf organic strain specific product offerings that appeal to more discerning and sophisticated customers at economies of scale. You can also provide customization. So think about branding and boarding gold leaf for weddings, bachelor parties, or corporate uh, events. So you can have other advantages with canagars. So blunts are large joints wrapped in tobacco paper. It's not legal, but you can have, like we mentioned, hemp, or um, maybe if you work with a tribe, you can have uh, tribal blunts. That could be very, very unique. The automated commercial joint rolling machine eliminates the hand-rolled production constraints, producing joints and canagars for all licensed entities, including producers, processors, and retailers. You can provide clients an opportunity to display compelling, professionally designed, and accessible customized brands with the capacity to create national brands with differentiated products at reasonable prices. Rolling is incredibly laborious and time-consuming, requiring skills and patience with customers seeking strain-specific options that are also underserved. Quality and consistency is a problem, and canagars have limited production because they're extremely expensive to produce. Joints aren't easy to roll, and canagars are even more difficult, especially if you have arthritis or physical limitations. Washington State has the highest companion uh, pre-roll, meaning that at least one out of every five purchases has a pre-roll. So 20% of all purchases in Washington State had at least one joint. Terpenes are also trending. They're being touted as uh, they're being touted more widely than ever, and the public's starting to catch on to what they are and why they matter to the cannabis experience. So consumers are aware of and interested in CBD as well. Therefore, infusing joints with terpene flavors and CBD will be essential. With the ability to automate, you can expect to see brands beginning to establish themselves as household names, especially as they go national and interstate with agreements. Having an automated solution is an opportunity to reallocate that human capital instead of manufacturing to turn that labor uh, into more of a, a marketing and distribution and sales team instead of just manufacturing. These automated commercial machines should eliminate the hand-rolled production constraints to produce joints and pre-rolls for all licensed entities, including producers and processors and retailers. 
as a consultant, I normally get paid for my advice, but I'll give you some free advice right now. Don't use a grinder that's made for ice cubes. A blender is made to crush ice, not cannabis. So you want to get something that's a little bit more fine, something that's made for cannabis. That's issue number one I've seen going to hundreds, if not thousands of farms over the last five or six years. Uh, I've seen people use the wrong kinds of tools, starting with that grinder. So get an appropriate grinder. Uh, Fritch is a, is a really good one. It's a $30,000 grinder, but you can adjust it um, and it's commercial and it's, uh, it's a really good grinder. After that, it needs to have the proper drying time. So before people fill it up, and I've seen them use an improper grinder and then go straight to filling without drying it in between. So it takes at least 24 hours to properly cure or dry the cannabis. So I would dry it first and then pack it into the, the pre-roll or whatever you're making joints, blunts, and then cure it afterwards. Otherwise, it's going to get really dry and crispy uh, and clog, um, or it's going to be too wet. If you grind it and then fill it, it needs to be a little bit drier than that. So you can, um, you can dry it first, then fill it, and then cure it. We had a lot of fun in 2015. I bought three pounds and ground up uh, a whole lot of weed, rolled about 1,500 joints and gave them out as business cards. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that people weren't used to smoking one gram joints, so they felt like it was clogged. So I had the opportunity to either educate my customer or switch marketing. If you try to educate people and then sell them on something, very, very difficult. But instead of telling people it's not clogged, it's um, you know, it's a cigar. I just changed the name of it. Instead of calling it a joint, I called it a cigar, a mini cigar. And then people, when they would smoke it, it wasn't clogging. It wasn't a hard pull. Um, and that's the difference between a pre-roll and a, and a cigar is that draw factor. The big tobacco has figured that out. Milliliters per minute on the draw has been perfected by big tobacco. Pre-rolls are a novelty. It's not going to stick around long-term because it's not the optimum shape or experience. And so with something like this, maybe it's a little bit too much, um, but you have to re-educate people. So it's just something to think about. Uh, whereas if you have a product that people aren't used to, it's not necessarily wrong. It just means you have to work that out with uh, marketing and advertising, educating to a certain degree. But again, I don't think that pre-rolls are going to be around long-term because it's not the optimum draw. The shape and everything else is a novelty. Somebody just wanted to throw in more at the, at the top, um, but it's not the perfect shape. Otherwise you would see big tobacco with that. So I think it's just going to be a novelty. It's not going to be around long-term, especially with automated solutions coming out now. All right, with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Hello, hemp friends. This is your host, Morris, from Volume Up, the Let's Talk Hemp podcast, where we explore and discuss all things hemp all the time. From industrial to nutritional to therapeutic to lifestyle, hemp has a place and a home pretty much everywhere. Download episodes now of the Let's Talk Hemp podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Come get loud with me on Volume Up as we take industrial hemp to a whole new level in 2022 and beyond.